I'm Evan with Hemmings, and today we're at West Tech to dyno a 4.8 liter Gen 4 GM Vortec truck engine, or as most of us call it, an LS. Now this is the smallest LS that GM ever made, which means that it's very affordable. Most people are looking for the bigger engines, but we wanted to find out, is this a good choice for your hot rod? And if we throw a whole bunch of good speed parts at it, what kind of power will it make? So we have our 4.8 liter engine strapped to the dyno. We're gonna do a baseline pull. It's got the factory intake manifold, camshaft. I mean, this is exactly as it would have come in a Silverado or a GMC pickup. And we kinda of wanna know what it does, how it does, what the numbers are before we start adding speed parts like a, a really aggressive camshaft, cylinder heads, and a race style carbureted intake. I saw 350s. Ah, uh, I did too. That's, I did too. That's more than I would think that a factory 4.8 would make. Is that like... Well, you know, this is at the flywheel, so, um, sure. you so, know, optimized headers. I don't remember the temp, but, you know, obviously we're, is, we're cheating. We're getting all that we can get. Here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something to point out, is that this is an engine dyno and not a chassis dyno, so okay. we're gonna see some numbers that are a little bit higher than what you would maybe get to the tire. There's no drivetrain losses. We have cold water, we've got good high flowing headers. So there's there's some things that will make an engine dyno read a little bit higher, but it's good to get a baseline. And our baseline was 355 horsepower, which is really good for only 293 cubic inches, which is what 4.8 translates to. And pretty square, yeah. Well, so now we know what it made. It's 355, that's the number to beat. So I think we're all gonna kind of brainstorm and come up with some guesses. Um, I want to make 500 horsepower. That's that's the goal today. That's very lofty. Uh, I picked that number because the LS7 was one of the highest naturally aspirated um, horsepower engines that GM ever produced in the LS line. And if we can do that with a 4.8 that's a lot cheaper and a lot smaller, I think that's really something. So, what do that, you think that, of that, That's a lofty goal, but I see you've got a lot of parts there on the parts bin. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and get them on and see what it does. Cool. We're going to start with the cylinder heads and the camshaft because those components make more power gains than really just about anything else on an engine. We're going to see how that affects the 4.8. We're going to look at the curves and we're going to see what it does for peak power. So Troy and I just finished slamming on a set of Edelbrock E Street cylinder heads. That's gonna give us a little bit more airflow. A Comp LSR series camshaft that measures 235 and 251 degrees at 50 thou of lift. It's over 600 lifts, so this is a real deal camshaft. It's about twice as big as anything you know, Chevy would have put on from the factory. So I'm really excited to see what this thing's gonna do. And because this engine is really small, we used a Comp BSR series uh, shaft rocker, and that's gonna let us turn some real RPM, and we're gonna see how much horsepower we can find. Four four forty eight at little past seven thousand. More power everywhere. Yeah. Longer curve. We found a hundred horsepower in four point eight liters, and I think the next step is we're going to try a carburetor and see if that'll pick up on top. But this is unbelievable. I mean, this is a tiny, tiny motor that most people ignore. And, and when you do see them run, they're always run with boosts and nobody ever really gets to see what it'll do it on its own. So naturally aspirated 448 horsepower so far and we're not done yet. Good old pump gas.
All right, so at this point, we have the factory fuel injection removed from the engine, and we might have lost some people, and they're going, why would you take the factory fuel injection off? Well, a carburetor is still a great solution for a lot of people. If you're building a hot rod, a race car, carbs work well, and they can make a lot of power, and they do a few things that fuel injection doesn't do. So we're gonna run this with a big Edelbrock single plane intake, a VRS series carburetor, and see if it beats out the factory fuel injection. Not close to the injection. This is not necessarily a function of the carburetor. This manifold just doesn't move air like the, the fuel injected one. And we could put a spacer on it, but we're not, we're not gonna find the fuel injected power. So I think we have our answer on the carb. It's down about 30 horsepower from where the fuel injection was. And that's gonna be more a function of the intake manifold design. So what we have to work with here today with a cathedral port head, I don't think the Vic Junior is gonna be our, our winner. So we're gonna go back to a fuel injected manifold and see if we can find some power there. It's okay, buddy. I still love you. We've got a fast LSXR with a 102 millimeter throttle body. This is one of the best cathedral port composite intakes that's out there. So we're gonna run this and hopefully that gets us a little bit closer to our goal. I think what's happening is we're comparing a really good manifold to a really good manifold. So we're picking up, you know, we, I think we found what's eight horse, eight, almost nine horsepower. Yeah. You think this engine would benefit from a vacuum pump? We don't have a vacuum pump, but we have a shop vac. Does that work? I've seen a shop vac work. <laughs> Being a junkyard small block that's got 200,000 plus miles on it, we know the rings are worn. You know, we can kind of see when we're running the dynos, there's a little bit of smoke, there's some blow-by. So there's, there's a theory that if you can get vacuum in the crankcase, it's gonna help with blow-by and it's gonna help the engine make a little bit more power. It'll, it'll help with windage. Typically you do a, a mechanical pump that's run off a belt on the front of the engine, but we don't have one of those. So Troy has kindly offered up his shop vac. Um, the expense of getting some oil in it. So we're gonna see if we can add some vacuum to the crankcase. And I mean, I don't really know what this is gonna do, but we're kind of out of hard parts to try. So we're gonna try something a little bit wacky. gonna fill this thing full of E85, we're gonna get it drunk and we're gonna see if the alcohol and the cooling effect of that helps pick up any power. Cause uh, shop vac does not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought that was gonna work good. All right, we have been on the dyno for a day. We have tried every variable we possibly can. We know that this LSXR is the best intake we've tested so far. We've done a cam, we've done heads. We're gonna put a 20 weight oil in it, thin it out a little bit, see if we can pick up some power there. And we're gonna swap the fuel over to E85, see if that helps us. But at the end of the day, it's gonna make what it makes. And this is about as much horsepower as somebody can get out of a 4.8 with off the shelf parts. She's done. 474.8 horsepower. I'll take it. That's, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's good. We showed up at West Tech Performance with a 355 horsepower, 200,000 mile 4.8 liter LS, and we're leaving with the same LS, but now it makes 474 horsepower. That's almost 100 horsepower per liter, over 100 horsepower that we've gained, and we're within 30 horsepower of the LS7, which was a 500 horsepower, naturally aspirated, 427 cubic inch engine. This is only 293. So if the question is, should I put this in my hot rod? You absolutely should.
It don't smell like E85 yet. It smells like gas. <laughs> oh. What's it taste like? Uh, I don't know what it tastes like. Corn.